Okay, commas part three. So I got a lot of example sentences here today, but not that many different concepts for you. So if you just bear with me, you'll find this is not too terribly difficult. The first thing is commas and introductory phrases. There's two types we're going to look at today. One's prepositional phrases, and the other is participles or participial phrases. Prepositional phrases, I hope you remember from previous years. Remember, they start with a preposition like in, over, under, of, for, etc. You get the idea. Maybe you remember the song. Uh, it was like coming around the mountain. I think uh, about above across after against along among I'm not going to sing it anymore but you get the idea so they start with a preposition and they end with the noun so in the first sentence here and I've highlighted them for you it says in the distance we saw Aspen now the rule here is if you've just got one prepositional phrase to start the sentence you don't need to put a comma after it can you yeah technically you can and you wouldn't be wrong but maybe we just get in the habit of if there's one we're not going to use it the exception to that is if it's causing confusion without the comma. So here it says, during the rush hour, traffic is heavy. You see how I read that and it didn't sound right? Because I didn't know where to pause. It's not rush hour traffic. It's during the rush hour, traffic is heavy. Because it's confusing, we've got to have a comma there after hour. Typically, though, the only time you need a comma is when there's more than one prepositional phrase in a row. So I've got two back-to-back -back here. On the left burner of the stove, a huge pot of beans Simmer, not a pot of bean. So what do you do? Do you put one in the middle and then another one here? Nope. You just wait until you're done with all your prepositional phrases and you stick it at the end. So if it said over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go, you're just putting a comma before we go. The last one for prepositional phrases here, though, it says on the left burner of the stove simmered a huge pot of beans. Now I've used the same prepositional phrase up here, but I'm not going to put a comma here. And the rule is this. If it stops right before a verb, as we have here with simmered, you do not put a comma. So on the left burner of the stove, simmered a huge pot of beans, no comma going to go there. The second type of introductory phrase that we're looking at is participles or participial phrases. Now, if you don't remember what that is, a participle is just when a verb acts like an adjective. In other words, it's describing something. So I've got the sentence, I was running. In this sentence, running is a verb. That's how we normally use it. However, you could use it to describe something. And here's an example, the running bull frightened me. All right, so we take that information now and we go down here to an introduction. Sparkling, the copper teapot looked like new. I mean, you can almost just feel that there's a natural pause there, right? Sparkling, comma, the copper teapot looked like new. Here, it's not just the participle jogging, it's jogging along the beach one evening. That's describing when the person slipped on a piece of seaweed. So you'll wait till the end of the phrase and you'll put it there. And again, if you read it, jogging along the beach one evening, I slipped on a piece of seaweed. There's a natural pause. The second rule today is commas and adverb clauses. Now, if you don't remember what a clause is either, it just means that there is a subject and a verb, and it's not a complete sentence. So, after I hike to Yosemite is an adverb clause. And the reason it's an adverb clause and not just a clause is because of the word after. If I just walked up to you and said, after I hike to Yosemite, you'd be like, yeah, what? And that's what adverb clauses do to you. So if you have one beginning the sentence, you're going to put a comma after it. Now, if this seems like a prepositional phrase, because you remember after is a preposition, it's not because we've got the subject I and the verb height. A prepositional phrase would be like, after the rain, I thought nothing else could impress me as much. Weird sentence, but you wouldn't put a comma there. If the adverb clause is in the middle of the sentence, this is just like last week when we did non-essential clauses, the mountains, because they were formed by glaciers, have spectacular slopes. You remember the rule. We're just going to put commas around that phrase. Perfect, right? If, though, it's at the end of the sentence, we're not going to put a comma before it. And I use the example with because, because I see a lot of people putting commas before it. And there never should be a comma before because unless it's a phrase like this that's got to be in the middle and eliminated. The slopes are spectacular because they were formed by glaciers. Leave it alone. It's perfect as is. On the other hand, if you start with that phrase, and I wanted to show you this, it's just like the first sentence, but you were probably told when you were younger, you can't start a sentence with because, and that's totally untrue. You can. It just has to be an adverb clause that starts it. Because they were formed by glaciers, comma, the slopes are spectacular. And then our last rule today is commas and antithetical phrases. An antithetical phrase just basically contradicts either the word following it or preceding it, coming right before it. And so when we have those, we're going to use commas. So it says hearts, not bridge, is Janet's favorite game. And you could almost treat this like it was a non-essential thing from last week. Not bridge. We still have the sentence hearts is Janet's favorite game. We're getting that contradictory phrase out of there. And here, if it's at the beginning of the sentence, unlike bridge, 
parts is often played without partners, you'll just put a comma after bridge. So those are the comma rules today. So you want to get to the exercise. The exercise is commas exercise three. And just like every other one that we've done, when you get to it here, you are going to see drop down menus. And you'll either choose comma or no comma. During the American Revolution at the end of the 1700s, soldiers from four different countries did the most fighting. Well, I just got done telling you, you don't have to put one after every prepositional phrase, just after the last one. So we'll no comma that one. We'll put a comma right there, and then you'll move on to the next thing. All right, that's it for commas this week.